everyone. I have some new um, downloads to show you. Um, Agatha Pop has sent me her latest um, Mushroom Tinies, um, which is very kind of her. And uh, I thought I would just show you the whole set. Um, I do have a discount code for buying any of her um, sets from her Etsy shop. It's in the description. Now, I thought I would come in a little closer. I printed these off on just on copy paper just to show you. So you may be able to see through to the design on the back because I've done them double sided. Um, but I printed one off to colour with you later. So we've got a very cute mushroom in a little glass um, sort of terrarium, I suppose, which is very lovely. And we look at this one. We have a lovely tree stump with one inside. Imagine a little home going inside. That's just gorgeous. And then we just have another little house. I think they're all mushroom houses, I think. But I'm not sure, actually, because I've just spotted one that isn't. But anyone who loves colouring mushrooms and toadstools like I do would just adore these. Um, this one isn't a house. We've got a really nice sort of cauldron. We've got a few little mushrooms there. And a little pair of houses there. Right, so that's the first page. The second page, I'll start at the bottom and go up instead. So this is another one in a sort of bottle. And then just a sort of straightforward house with some nice florals to colour. Another pair of houses. But they're all slightly different, which is fun. But I like, in a way, the plainness of it. So you can do it however you wish. You there's no sort of shading and things. I mean, here we've just got this line to show us that this is a see-through bottle. And then you can slightly see these through. And then, you know, you can just do it however you wish. Look at that one. It's got a cute little chimney. It's really pretty. So that's the first 12. These are slightly bigger. Um, I'm not sure if they f Yeah, they'll fit. So these are all houses as well. Just come out a little bit because there were only four on a page. Got a really nice daffodil there as well. I like this one. It's got a whole trough of flowers on the roof. It's very sweet. And that one. I like this. Now, on the back of this one, we have another four. Uh, yeah, it's quite a tall one. We've got three stories in that one. It's a bit like my house. It's very tall. And this one, we've got another little cauldron here, look, which I think is great fun. It's really magical. Another one in a bottle, but we've got other ones around the outside. And this one looks pretty magical too. We've got like a gourd here and the moon. It looks really sort of um, Halloween-ish. Uh, do we do the other side? Yeah. This one I've printed accidentally on one side only. Oh, it's come out there we go so this is more of a little scene like a little village so we've got two with a path and some other houses here so we've got quite a lot going on in that one that's rather fun and we've got a similar one here but we've got some nice daffodils and a little signpost here it's really cute a lot of fun yeah it didn't print on the back for some reason it didn't print properly because i'm sure it's my fault so this page um we have one on a tree stump, which I think is a lot of fun. This one has blackberries, which obviously is my favourite because it's got blackberries. It's the one I'm going to colour in a minute. And we have one here, um, which is sort of a double layer almost. And a fun one there as well, some really pretty flowers. So those are all the ones you get in the set. What I have done is I have printed one out like this. Now this is a toned paper, as you can see. But when, you're, when you get the uh, mushrooms, you have the option of getting them as in black, which this is, or in grey, which this is. You can see how much lighter it is. I'm actually going to keep them side by side because I don't know how easy it is for you to actually see the colour on this one. So I'm going to, I'm interested in colouring on toned paper, having never tried it um, on paper this dark before. I've got my polychromos though because there's a lot of fine detail. So I'm going to start with my white and do the dots that are on the mushroom. Now white colouring in white is not something that I normally do because I normally use white paper. So it's quite fun to have a go 
uh, actually using a white pencil and we can see how well it shows up. I've often thought the polychromo is white was a bit rubbish but it really isn't is it? <laughs> so there are dots. Um, now the top of the mushroom, now because we've got this toned colour I don't know how it's going to look. I think I'm going to use a fairly light red. Um, I think I'll use the Pale Geranium Lake. Um, I'm not going to show you the pencil because it's um, the name is sharpened off. So there's not a lot of point. Now, if you like the look of a picture without seeing the black lines, then being able to print with the, in the grey, um, with the grey lines, is pretty cool. Sometimes I like to see the lines and sometimes I don't. I change my mind a lot about it, whether I think it's a good idea or not. So uh, it's uh, it's very personal, I think. But some people like to white out the lines. I mean, it makes it look a little bit more realistic because obviously um, nothing in real has a black line around it. But uh, it is just a colouring page after all. It's not. But it depends. It's just so dependent on my mood and, you know, very personal taste as to whether it's something you want to do or not. Oops. So I just went out of the lines there and you may not have seen because the lines are so faint. <laughs> There's an advantage for you. Now this paper is a little bit textured so you're going to see some of the toned paper behind. Um, which is an interesting look. I don't know if I'm going to do another colour or not um, on that. I'm going to just leave it for now. I'm going to try, whoops, that's it. I'll just find somewhere to put my, I'm going to use my very lightest grey. It's the warm grey one. Another one that I rarely use. Look how long this is. I've ne This is my only one of these I've ever used. I haven't replaced it. Um, don't use it very often but with the toned paper you can but I'm just learning how to use. I've never used this paper before so you'll have to forgive me if I mess it up but uh, I just thought it'd be a bit of fun and this paper is um, now under here it'd be a bit darker but I'm gonna put a bit of this on first and then cover it with the dark slightly darker one and see how that works so I'm going to use the warm grey too now. Um, yeah, this is the Derwent toned paper. Um, which uh, I've just bought quite recently. I'm going to use the warm grey 3 now. Whoops, can't get it out of the box. bit on the edge to be even darker and this bit to look a bit darker and down here be a bit dark in there as well just thinking about those curves in the skirt skirty bit there we go let's use a slightly darker one this is the cold grey fall warm grey fall sorry for this bit. Now you need it to look a bit darker than the paper in the background. Now a pro of using toned paper is that you don't have to do a background if you don't want to because it's there for you. I just need to sharpen this to get around that uh, around the blackberry. No, so you don't have to do a background because it's there for you. Uh, this set of toned paper, there are only four um, different colours. There's a I think there's a lighter version of this, grey. And then there's a, um, I'm just trying to fade this a bit towards the middle. And there's a, um, um, a cream and a sort of brownish colour. Sort of light sienna, I suppose, maybe orangish brown, you know. But, um, you know, there are lots of different pads with different papers in to uh, sort of think about. 
I think it would be quite difficult if you had too many different tones to know which one to use. But I suppose for a picture like this I would probably use green to be honest. But then what would happen to my reds? It would all be a bit fun wouldn't it? A bit of fun experimenting. I'm going to grab a slightly darker pencil. Um, the cold grey 5, warm grey 5. <laughs> I can't get it right today. It's Monday morning. I haven't done any recording for a while. Everyone, the boys have just gone back to uh, college today and I'm trying to get my brain in gear. My adrenaline is so high because getting everyone back out to work, well, husband's been going to work anyway, but getting everyone back to college and tomorrow I've got to rush halfway across the county to get my son to the dentist and get him back in time for college so my brain's sort of whirring but uh, I'm trying to uh, sound calm <laughs> but uh, yeah I'm just sort of thinking about what I've got to do now I'm going to do this top bit here under here as well with this darker one the sort of gills I always think are usually quite dark but just um I really want to colour it in the direction that they would be in and it doesn't matter if it's a bit liney because if you think about the bottom of your mushroom when you buy it in the shop not that this is one that you would eat being as it's red we don't eat the red ones as pretty as they are if you think about when you buy them they will have lines like this on the sort of gill area so keep trying to make it yours in the right direction Now I'm wondering whether this was the best choice of paper as this is very much the mushroom colour or maybe I should have chosen a different colour for my mushroom but I tend to go for this sort of colour. Maybe I'm just a bit lazy, I don't know, but I was going to use the same colour. Now I think it needs to be a tad darker in some areas. So, warm grey 6, here we come. I'm thinking around the centre part here there might be a bit of shadow and on the edge I think it might be a bit darker I'm just going to try and fade that in a bit I think it won't hurt to put a few more lines in like that Maybe I'm just making it look messy. Well, I don't think so. Let's try and fade that in. I don't really want a line and I'm thinking maybe. Although the idea was to fade the lines, we'll just put a bit of a one in there. Now under these circles to make them look a little bit more 3D, I'm just going to put a bit of shadow under them. Okay, now we have a window. I'm going to make it quite pale just because I can, because it's darker paper. So I'm using my cream. I'm going to see how that looks for sort of light coming from the window. It's just quite fun to be able to use the really really pale colours and for them to show up a bit of a novelty for me there we go now we've got a bit of a windowsill under the window I'm going to use my warm grey 6 to just pop that in it's just the smallest bit there and then I'm just going to brush getting quite a bit of pencil debris um, we've got the door um, Again, I don't want to go too dark. I'm going to use the Nougat because it's quite a greyish brown and I think it will match in with the uh, colour of the toaster, although it looks quite warm brown to me. Now it's coming down onto the page, but never mind. Around the window. 
around the door handle. You may not even be able to see those little details. Now I'm going to grab the grey, the warm brown grey again, warm grey 6 I mean, talking nonsense, and put in the um, wooden panels that have drawn into the door and a few more lines here and there just to make it look like wood grain. A bit of a shadow under the window and the handle and a bit of a shadow around the door like that. I think it would be slightly set into the mushroom so it might just have a little bit of shadow going around the edge like that. Now we have our leaves. I think we've got these three leaves here. I'm going to use a nice pale colour again. I'm going to use the light green. I'm going to try and fade them towards the tip. I don't know whether they'll look too grey if I do that. I think it's working. This is so much fun. <laughs> I'm going to grab a slightly darker green, the leaf green. Just put a few darker details on those leaves. Just make the top darker, and particularly where they're overlapping. Blending in very nicely. Just going to grab the light green again. It's really interesting. I can see them blending together better on this paper than you can when you're using a white. I don't know if I'm making sense. Right, I think there will be a bit of shadow under those leaves, so I'm going to use the warm grey six again. a shadow under them. Like that. Blackberry time. Whoop whoop. Favourite. Right, manganese violet. That's where I am going to start. Now every blackberry is going to be the same so I'm going to do them all at once. So all over the whole of the blackberry with a bit of manganese violet I'm using it quite lightly because I need to be able to see where the circles are. Okay. But I want this slightly pinkish um, layer on the, on the base. But as I say I'm going really lightly because I need to see those individual circles and particularly on that one because they're so small it's a bit hard to see obviously printing them in a light colour <laughs> makes them harder to see I'm just looking at my window as I'm colouring this thinking I want to do something a bit more with it as well so I'm going to do that in a minute and now I'm chopping and changing I might forget otherwise. So I'm going to take the um, warm grey six. I'm going to draw in the frame because it's disappeared. I think that's better. Okay. Next step, blackberries. We want a nice dark colour. I'm going to use the mauve. It's the darkest purple in the polychromos. I'm going to start with the little one because it's the hardest and normally I would put my head about an inch from the paper for this. but I can't so I'm having to guess a little bit so around the edge with the darker one and then bring the colour in towards the middle it will be much easier for me to demonstrate to you on a slightly bigger one Let's do this really big one. So this is our larger circle. So you see the edge of the circle. So you go around here in lots and lots of layers. And then you gently come towards the middle with less. 
and then it looks fairly spherical, we hope. And we do that with all of them, leaving a little bit in the middle where we can see that lighter manganese violet colour. Now, talking about toned papers again, I can't say for sure what's going to be best for you. Firstly, there are different pads with different sizes of paper. So some come in the letter size, which you Americans use, and some come in A4, which us Brits use, and you need to find the right size for your own printer. You also need to think carefully about the thickness, because printers cope with different thicknesses of paper. If you're not sure, um, find out the manufacturer of your printer and the model. Either look in the manual, you can find manuals online. Um, type a question in online, what's the maximum thickness of paper I can use in my printer? Or um, just write to the manufacturer and say, I want to buy X paper, X thickness, will it fit? The next thing is the ink. You really, if you can, want a waterproof ink because it smudges less when you're colouring. Even if you're using dry medium like um, these pencils, you still need to think about the fact that, um, that your ink might smudge a bit. I find that Prisma colours, particularly the blender, can smudge ink quite a lot. So that's something to think about, waterproof ink. Um, it might just be that your printer has it anyway, mine does, which is very lucky, the ink, the branded ink that comes is. Um, my husband uses it to print out and then do watercolour over, and it's absolutely fine, but um, it depends. And it's not absolutely necessary if you're just using dry pencils, but it's just worth thinking about if you're choosing ink or choosing a printer. Um, what else is there to say? Yes, um, so the thickness is really important. If you buy a paper that's too thick, it will just jam in your printer and you won't print it. Um, and even if you're going to a copy shop, um, they might refuse to print on certain papers if they're too thick for their machines. Um, or they might only print with papers that they have there. You know, you might not be able to take your own paper. So uh, it's sort of worth thinking about and asking around and finding out about. Now my blackberries don't look very three-dimensional so I'm going to get a black which is what I normally do anyway and define between each of the little circular parts. It's going to be really hard on the little one. It might have been sensible to have done this before I coloured them in but I'm just learning to use this paper. There we go. It's not necessary to go around the edge but just to go in between them because if you think about how a black bee looks in between each of these little circular pieces there's usually a little um, gap which is shadowy and that's what we're drawing in, that shadow. There we go. Some of it is a bit of guesswork, but you can use your common sense, or as I say, maybe do it first, and then you might need to do it again after, once you've sort of coloured over it all. And then our last one, and we can do the leaves. Now I tend to do blackberry leaves slightly bluish green and quite dark normally. That's how I think they look. I'm sure there are lots of different varieties of blackberry plant which have different um, leaves, but that's how I do them. The ones that grow along our canal tend to look like that. And they have um, pink flowers, which is what I'm also going to do. There we go. There they are. So the stems... Mm, I think we'll try an emerald green because I'm going for lights mainly. Obviously the blackberries themselves are quite dark. But 
this is the emerald green and we'll do the bits on the top I'm just going to plain colour them because it's a light green you can't really shade it up and then I shall put some darker green in some areas once I'm done with all my greens like here where it overlaps it will want a bit of shadow I'm not doing this in a particularly logical order now we've got some berries here, I'm a bit confused by those because blackberries don't have little round ones like that but they're rather cute so I'm not complaining and uh, I shall think of a colour, I might just do them pink now the leaves again, I'm just going to go over them with this um, in a layer and then I'll think about where I want them to be a little bit darker in a minute In front of our little um, house there are a couple of stones as well, which um, I need to remember. I'll probably forget. <laughs> I have good faith in my memory. Oh, I'll probably forget. <laughs> now these leaves have lines on as you can see in the white paper version. It's quite hard to see on here so I'm going to draw those back in. I'm just I think I'm going to use the thallo green Oops, thallo green and I'm going to start here and just put a bit around the edge like that as a sort of shadow slightly darker and under there And I think maybe it'd be a bit dark down at the bottom. Like that. And here, a bit along the bottom. And here where they overlap and around the edge. along the bottom up there now here I'm gonna do the one underneath in the darker I think we aren't it's not quite dark enough I'm gonna grab an even darker green I'm gonna go quite dark I think I'm just gonna go straight to our cobalt deep cobalt green which is really dark And I'm going to draw in back in the lines. I can't even hardly see them. Like that. I'm sort of half guessing. Sorry, Agatha, you drew them so beautifully. I'm not having to guess. <laughs> uh, there we go. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit here so we can really see what's going on behind there. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. Oh, but my nose is running. Okay, flowers. Next, I'm going to do the flower centres in a slightly greeny yellow. The um, cadmium yellow lemon is slightly greeny, but actually, I think I'm going to use a tiny bit of the light green first at the very bottom. Oops. And then the um, the cadmium yellow lemon for the rest, which is bright. <laughs> you don't notice how bright it is when it's on white paper, do you? Wow. Now the flowers, I'm thinking a pale, pale pink. The palest pink I have is the light magenta, I think, or the pink madeleine. I might 
Mm. Or shall I use that? Indecision time. I'm going to use the Pink Madder Lake. I think it's going to work. We'll find out, won't we? <laughs> I'm thinking quite dark here and then lighter towards the tip. It's very bright. It almost looks neon on this paper. Like that. Another thing with paper when I was talking about it is to make sure it's suitable for pencils um, or whatever medium you're using. You, some paper works for lots. This one is does. Um, but some papers specific for certain things. So if you buy one that's for watercolour, for example, it might have quite a lot of tooth in it, which means that it's rough to fit to the touch when you this one's got a bit on it. And it means you have to layer up your pencil a lot more. That can end up looking very pretty, but you need to think about whether that's something that you want to do whether you'd rather have it quite smooth so you only have to do one layer. I mean this is a roughish but I'm not doing um I'm at least I'm tending to only do one layer. But these are a bit too vibrant for my liking so I'm going to tone them down a little bit with some white particularly on the edges. So here is my white and I'm just going to go it's a very strange noise outside. It sounds like the wind blowing through a kite. I suspect it isn't. <laughs> it's so weird. I suspect it's a power tool of some type. I don't know if you can even hear it, that's really scruffy. It's so strange, but because I'm on my window's quite high. I can't see anything but the top of the tree through it. So I've got no idea what it could be. But I know my neighbour over the back has been having a lot of work done on her house. So uh, it could be anything to do with her. Right, there we go. That looks nicer, I think. Now, where are we? We've got berries. Now, I was thinking I would use the manganese violet for these little berries. You may not even be able to see them. Now, round and round with lots of layers, and then less towards the middle. And the same over here. Now, this because it's on grey scale, um, grey print. The stems are very pale, so I'm going to go over those with a green as well. Um, I think I use the dark cobalt, deep cobalt green, sorry. Just go over those, just so it's really obvious they're not like floating in the air. And they're connected. But they're a bit, I might put some white pen on those in a minute. But I'm going to do these stones before I forget. I was really tempted then to just grab the colour I did for the front door, but that would be wrong. Um, I think I use a dark sepia actually. Make them a little bit darker on the bottom than the top, if I can. There's some of them are tiddly tiny, teeny tiny. There we go. Okay, we're almost there. Um, what do I want to do? I want to grab a white and do a few touches, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. So this is just a Posca white. It will probably show up really brightly. I'm going to make a few shine marks on there. I'm going to put some dots on our flowers. Now, I could put some shine on the blackberries. I'm going to, I think, just the tiny dots. Um, I haven't done the front door handle, have I? They 
this has been such fun. I can't wait to do the rest. But I'm going to have to delay because I've got time. I've got lots of other things planned. I'm out tomorrow. I don't know. Fancy having to go outside and not colour all day. Oof. <sighs> right, there we go. I think. I am done all but the hand door handle and I'm going to use the pale geranium lake that I used for the roof for that. There we go. And I am done. So I am going to take this one away and put that in the middle, come in a bit closer so you can see the finished thing nice and closely. There we go. So that was fun. So, as I say, there's going to be a link um, to where you can get hold of this um, if you want to. But uh, there we go. There's my finished little mushroom. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you have a really lovely day and happy colouring. <laughs>